the Belgian hero who invaded UK fishing waters. When Victor Depeep decided to invade England, he knew it would mean a confrontation with the Royal Navy. The thought of backing down never crossed his mind, it was 1963 and Europe was otherwise at peace. When he set out from the Belgian port of Zeebrugge in his little trawler, he was armed only with a sense of history and a determination to stick up for the rights of his fellow Belgian fishermen. Victor wasn't a full-time trawler captain, he was a successful accountant and member of the city council of Bruges, an ancient center of learning and commerce which was once among the richest cities in the world. For centuries, Bruges was connected to the North Sea by a deep water canal, and was home to a substantial fishing fleet which by tradition worked the rich waters off the English coast. Victor was determined to stick up for the Belgian right to carry on fishing in the same seas, although he understood this might provoke powerful emotions in his British friends. Victor came up with the idea for his invasion, codenamed Operation Charles II, when he discovered a significant document in the Bruges City Archive. It was a charter, written in the king's name, guaranteeing perpetual access to British fishing grounds for 50 boats from Bruges. After the execution of his father Charles I at the end of the English Civil War between Royalists and Parliamentarians, Charles spent part of a period of European exile in Bruges waiting for the restoration of the monarchy. In a BBC television report on Victor Depeep's invasion of 1963, the correspondent rather sniffily describes this as a period of shameless debauchery. That may have been part of the reason that Charles felt such enthusiasm for Bruges, but it's interesting to note that as early as the 17th century the economic value of access to fishing grounds was well recognized. Victor's son Paul Depeep still lives on the Belgian coast not far from Bruges. He was proud to see that as the Brexit negotiations began to stall over the vexed issue of fishing rights, the Belgian government's thoughts began to turn back to Victor's cross-channel operation. We can't say for sure what role the charter played in the Brexit negotiations, but we do know the Flemish Ministry for Fisheries forwarded a copy to the European Commission to make sure that it was factored into any deal. He was determined to test his theory about the validity of Charles' charter in a British court. Fishermen have known for centuries that rights to work in foreign territorial waters are fragile assets which can be rewritten or revoked at the drop of a hat. So Paul says his dad was much admired in the Belgian fishing community. Victor dropped his nets in British waters off the coast of Sussex and was duly arrested as he'd hoped by a Royal Navy motor torpedo boat. At about this point you sense that everyone was beginning to realize that this was no ordinary fishing dispute, and that the polite bespectacled accountant from Belgium might be onto something. And that was indeed the case, Victor wanted to settle the legal point about royal charters once and for all. In the finest traditions of stories of adventure on the high seas, I'll ask you to wait for a moment to hear how Victor's invasion turned out. His legal dispute is still well remembered by the crews of Belgium's modern fishing fleet, whose chronic anxiety about their access to English territorial waters deepened as the Brexit negotiations dragged on. Job shot works out of the port of Ostend, just a short distance down the coast from Bruges, and takes his boat, the Job Senior, into the rich waters off the coast of Sussex every week. The shots have been sailing these waters since around 1700, just a few years after Charles II issued that fateful charter, and Job says all fishing disputes historically have been about politics and diplomacy. Relations with English crews themselves, in the same sea area where Victor Depeep got himself arrested, are good, he says. For Job, a stable deal which goes beyond Brexit and includes the Belgian fleet is the only outcome which guarantees a future for him and his family. Belgium's short coastline means its territorial waters are not big enough to support its fleet, and he makes the point that the channel is French as well as English. This began as a story about fishing rights and Brexit, and by a strange historical quirk the powers of the Stuart monarchy after the restoration. But at its heart is a story of relationships, which are so deep and so ancient that you find yourself wondering if Brexit itself won't one day seem like just one more point of detail in a very long story. Two of the most celebrated regiments of the British Army were founded in Bruges to protect Charles II when he lived there, the aristocratic cavalry of the Life Guard and the Grenadier Guards. Flemish bricklayers helped build London, and British artists and architects helped restore the ancient glories of Bruges during the great artistic revival of the 19th century. No one can put that relationship in context like Brigitte Bernard, an architectural historian who works for Bruges City Council and is such an Anglophile that she's the only non-British person I've ever heard referring to Europe as the continent. She says simply, 
the English and Bruges is a love story. Bruges became one of the first places that modern British tourists began to visit, and that tradition has persisted through endless changes of historical circumstance. Brigitte says that flow of tourists was important to the citizens of Bruges too, English tourists and the English have been part of our daily life since I was a little girl, she told me. The British path to Bruges was set long ago. I cannot imagine that British people will stop coming to Bruges, says Brigitte. Victor Depeep after all first heard about Charles II's charter when he was leafing through a copy of the Illustrated London News, a magazine which offered a serious and classy chronicle of important historical subjects and world events. When we left Victor earlier in this piece he was up before magistrates in Lewis facing rather serious charges of illegal fishing. The British government had no desire to test in public the validity of the Bruges Charter and the legal power of personal decrees made by kings and queens in open court. To Victor and to the fishing crews of Bruges that was a tacit admission that the fishing privileges granted by a grateful crown around the time that Sir Christopher Wren was designing St. Paul's Cathedral remained valid around the time the Beatles were beginning to top the charts. Victor's son Paul says the fishermen of Bruges recognized his achievement, he was a hero, he told us simply. But the fact that it's played a part at all is testament to the deep ties between Britain, Bruges, and Belgium, and above all to Victor Depeep an Anglophile and an adventurer with a sense of humor and a sense of history.